What's up guys, Jay Lee here. Today I'm going to walk you through um, just how people defend feminism and defend women in general when facts hit them in the face and facts say otherwise. Now I've talked a bit about this, um, how I do this, and this is not my Facebook, so you know this is what, what we call an alt or an alternate uh, profile or an alternate Facebook. So this is not my name. Um, I will be probably showing a few names here. You, you might incidentally see a few names. Um, just ignore that. Obviously, it's not me. Um, the other people who, who, who show are not, you know, not intended to, um, you know, bash them or anything like that. It's really just to show how people defend feminism because they're stuck in the matrix, because they're blue-pilled and they don't know otherwise, and they don't know that they've been lied to. Um, by feminism they don't know that you know feminism is a basically it's a hate movement so again as I explain in other videos and as I talk about frequently I often um, do this I'll go online and I will you know post the truth I post red pill truth and people are not ready for for the red pill they're not ready to hear the real truth right um, it's just like Neo said, right? In a, or not Neo, but a Morpheus in um, the Matrix. You know, some people, most people are, they're 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 hopelessly inured. They're hopelessly reliant on the system so much so that they'll fight to defend it. They don't even know that they're trapped. They don't even know that they're being lied to. They don't even know that they're being controlled, right? So I experience this all the time. I experience this all the time but I still speak the truth because someone has to do it someone has to go out there and someone has to spread the red pill truth so that's something that I like to do in certain groups um, certain Facebook groups because that's that's a way to reach people that's a way to market market the truth market you know red pill information and why do I do it because it saves lives because it helps men it, you know the more men we wake up the better the world is gonna be and that's just how I feel about things. Um, but of course, you're going to have agents out there, right? This is this is what it is. You're going to have agents out there who are trying to attack you because they don't want you to mess up their system, right? And these people oftentimes don't even know they're agents. They believe the bullshit that's coming out of their mouth. They believe the brainwashing. They believe the propaganda. And they fight you to shout you down, to shut you up. Now... It's usually a mix between the, the people who really do benefit from the lies and, and the cult movement, which is feminism, right? These women, these feminist women um, and, and women in general, and they know that they, they know they benefit. And that's one of their biggest motivations to shout you down. That's one of their biggest motivations to um, further propagate the cult hate movement, which is feminism, is that they get the benefits. So that's why they don't want anybody taking away their cash cow. They don't want anybody spreading truth. And I've been attacked at least for eight years. You know, I've been doing this since about 2012, 2013, um, in various forms. I used to be a lot less good at it. I, I used to suck at it. I, you know, I used to get in arguments. I used to be emotional. But over time, I learned how to do it in, 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 a, in a quality way. I learned how to do it in a way that is, you know, smart. I learned how to do it in a way that's not necessarily name calling or argumentative, but I just use facts and I just, you know, I just, I don't get into ad hominems. I don't get into the emotional argument. I don't get into bitterness or name calling or, thing, or things like that because that's what they want to do. They don't want you to speak facts. They don't want you to come with the truth. They want to sucker you into a emotional argument. So I don't do that. So anyway, I'm without further ado, I'm going to... Um, show you a typical th this is basically a typical post with a typical argument uh, typical rebuttal typical attack and you know it varies sometimes it's more people sometimes mostly it's women a lot of times it, you know a lot of times it is men now the last few years I've been having a lot of men come out and say you know yeah I agree with you you're right you're right and, and it's like that to me is progress because it shows me that people are waking up. It shows me that men are waking up to the truths and the facts. And like I say, I always use facts. I always use statistics, um, you know, for my argument. So 
this is a this is a article that I um, you know ran across in one of my Facebook groups. Um, it's called "Is Feminism a Hate Movement?" and I'm going to click on the link in a second. So I, I shared this article and what I said at the top. I said modern feminism is a massive power grab for financial, social, and political leverage by perpetuating false accusations against men and pretending to be victims. It's basically a cult, and I prove that. I prove that in the comments. But first, I'm going to take you to this article. Um, is feminism a hate movement? Now, this is a quality article. This was written yesterday by this person, Jibriel Holloway. I have no idea who this is, but this is a this is a website called PhenomenalAct.com. Um, I've seen some stuff from these guys before, and they're pretty good. These guys are pretty good. They they're they're red pilled. They are for men. They are part of the MRA, part of the men's positive movement, etc. Which it's funny how we don't even have a men's day. We don't have a you know, protect men. We don't have a, you know, I mean, there, there, there's no resources for men or anything like that. So, so guys have to independently start their own websites and independently release their own blogs just to have some support for us. But I appreciate these guys. Hats off to the hats off to these people. What the general public tends to judge men's rights activism, uh, or while the general public tends to judge men's rights activism by negative internet gossip. Seemingly, everyone from politicians to average Joes go the opposite direction for feminism. They praise feminism so much that some say that if you're not a feminist, you're against equal rights for men and women. What's ironic is that feminists constantly sink to levels that MRAs don't go, not even in the most slanderous tales. Okay, So what he's basically saying is that they'll lie, they'll perpetuate falsities, whereas MRAs tell the truth, and yet even though we tell the truth, we're regarded as weirdos, we're regarded as um, you know extremists and, and, and hate hate group, and we and we promote hate speech. But th that's all tactics that they use to shout us down. Those are all tactics that they use to socially um, you know cut us off and to socially diminish our you know, truths in, in, in our importance. So that's basically what he's saying. Yes, that is a challenge to prove me wrong. Contrary to what some critics believe, feminists don't ignore male issues. No, that would be a welcome alternative. Here are a few instances where feminists showed how they really feel about gender equality. Hiding facts about domestic violence. So he's saying, not, he's saying they don't ignore male issues. They actually hide them they actively hide them so they they're aware of our issues but they actively downplay them because why because they're a cult because they want to they're the the, the unique victims right if men are victimized they don't ever talk about that you never hear feminists talk about men being victimized but you'll also simultaneously hear feminists claim oh we're for equality we care about men's rights too no you don't because you never talk about our our, our oppression you never talk about our rights you never talk about us being victims ever because that is your cash cow feminist so he's saying there they hide facts about domestic violence question for people who wonder why both men and women oppose believe all women how's your we are with you amber heard campaign going so with amber heard there's a clear obvious double standard amber heard was the one who um uh domestically abused Johnny Depp and she twisted it around and turned it around on her until she got found out by the hotel cameras that showed her beating herself up in a hotel elevator and Johnny Depp has actual evidence that she cut his finger and she also beat him up and he's got actual evidence and actual um, video from hotel surveillance showing her doing that. So, and that all came out this last year. And guess what? The feminists are silent. Guess what? The, the the women who supposedly claim they're for equal rights and they're for men's rights, and they don't want to see men be become victims. They are vi they are um, vehemently silent. Why? Why are they vehemently silent? Because it doesn't benefit them. Because Amber Heard is who they are. They're liars. They are, you know, playing victim for the benefits. And this is what Amber Heard did. She played victim for the benefits. And she claims she's a feminist. She claims she's a oppressed and she's a victim and all this. And look what she did. So the real truth came out and they were silent as church mice. A quick Google search 
of the phrase domestic violence will only show stories, programs, and statistics where women are the victims and men are the abusers. It's easy to conclude that this is simply because men are rarely victims, and that's what certain people want you to think. Professor Murray Strauss proved this in her report, Gender Symmetry and Partner Violence, Evidence and Implications for Prevention and Treatment. His research shows that feminists have spent at least 30 years ensuring that domestic abuse statistics don't count male victims, which leads to a lack of shelters for men, a lack of funding for any kind of support, and the masses not seeing any of this as a problem. The cover-up methods include, but are not limited to, suppressing evidence, harassing researchers <clears throat> who disprove their agenda, and only using male criminal studies. For example, Professor Suzanne Stein. Metz wrote articles and books showing equal rates of perpetuation by males and females. This resulted in bomb threats at her daughter's wedding. The report also points out that some researchers only asked female participants about attacks from their partners and asked men about perpetration, threatening to kill female MRAs. So feminists basically are threatening to bomb the people who speak the truth about the the. the male domestic violence rates uh the female male domestic violence rates how men are equally um abused just like women are and yet you have women coming out threatening to with bomb threats to suppress the voice and the truths of these of these authors now here you have feminist threats uh against female MRAs. So if you're a female MRA, you are in danger from other, from from other women and feminists because they don't like you. Now, does that sound like a peaceful equality movement to you? Sure doesn't to me. Aaron Pizzi, who spent over 40 years helping victims of both genders, can attest to the previous point. She addressed abusive women in her 1982 book, Prone to Violence, which was heavily censored. One editor got her blacklisted from English publishing houses for 10 years, and books from that company were remandered. Radical feminists would steal her books, protest her lectures, and send bomb threats. Aaron would eventually exile from England. So they basically ran her out of England. Throughout the previous decade, Esther Villar, whom I really love, I, her, her, her book Manipulated Man is fantastic. You know, read it. I, I, I watched the, watch the audio book on YouTube. I think it's on YouTube. Fantastic. If you're, if you're a Red Pill guy, if you're an MRA, you got to read that. Throughout the previous day, I, I would say The Manipulated Man by Esther Villar is on par, maybe even better than The Rational Male. Um, maybe not better, but I would say it's on par. It, it, I, I would recommend Rational Male and The Manipulated Man a, as a co-read. You need both those books at the same time. Throughout the previous decade, Esther Villar got the same treatment because of her book, The Manipulated Man, according to a 1973 newspaper. In the last 13 months, Esther Villar has been spat on, shouted down, sued, picketed, threatened with bombs, and asked by a delegation of English women to leave the country. In Norway, militant feminists broke into her publisher's office and trashed the place. In Switzerland, bomb threats were sent to the bookstore where she was signing autographs. In her home country of Germany, she was beaten in a library bathroom by four women. Boy, what a peaceful, equal movement feminism is. After you click the newspaper link, you'll have to click show article next, uh, show article text OCR to see the article, then hold control and press F to search for her name. In 1975, she had televised debate, she had a televised debate with famous German feminist Alice Schwarzer. Right out of the gate, Schwarzer was rude, claiming that her friends called the book either purely stupid or satirical. Her resentment towards the author only gets worse as the video goes on. You may want to turn on YouTube captions when viewing it. Protesting a man's, a men's mental health event days before a suicide. Do not take someone's silence as his pride. Perhaps he is busy fighting with himself. So they suppress male suicide, uh, uh, male suicide awareness. So basically, they want men to kill themselves. I mean, this is horrible shit, man. University of York planned to dedicate International Men's Day 2015 to men's health. A representative stated the intention was to draw attention to some of the issues men tell us they encounter and to follow this up by highlighting in particular the, the availability of mental health and welfare support, which we know men are sometimes reluctant to access. 
Somehow this offended about 200 people, including students, alumni, and staff, who signed an open letter condemning those plans. Surprise, surprise, some of the signees mentioned that they were members of feminist groups. Ironically, one part of the letter says, the closing remark, gender equality is for everyone, echoes misogynistic rhetoric that men's issues have been drowned out by the focus on women's rights. I mean, that's just a, what a twisted thing to say. Basically, they're saying if, if any man wants equality, what that means is that he wants equality over women's rights. It's just like you can't make it any more clear that you don't want men to have rights, that you want women to have all the rights. You want women to have all the, all the sympathy, all the oppression narrative. That's what you're saying. I mean, it's just so sick and twisted what these people do. On November and, and, and trust me, I, I hear this kind of shit all the time when I post stuff like this. Just twisted, backward rhetoric that's just evil. I don't know how, to, how else to put it. On November 16th, a student was taken to the hospital after being discovered with life-threatening injuries. He died soon after, with the cause of death being ruled a suicide. Less than 24 hours later, the University of York apologized to those who were offended and canceled the event, the event that could have helped their students who were going through depression, which is especially crucial considering that males account for three quarters of registered suicides. Aren't you glad those campaigners gave a F about men's mental health? So basically a guy committed suicide because they shot it down and stopped, stopped the event, and he could have been saved if, they, if the, the event wasn't stopped. <sighs> That wasn't the first time feminists fought against support for suicidal men. In 2012, William Farrell, author of books such as The Boy Crisis and The Male, uh, the Myth of Male Power, gave a lecture at the University of Toronto. Among other issues, the lecture was about mental illness and suicide in men. 100 or so protesters blocked the doors, holding signs and harassing students and cops, all the while shouting that men's rights activism is the hate group. And they stay, they're doing that today. They still do that crap. I mean, it's sick. It's like, why? why? Where do you get off? I mean, it's just so... Okay, one student said that two of his friends had committed suicide, and he hoped the presentation would help him understand why people get to that point. Another man was followed around by a woman who repeatedly insulted him for being there. Even people who didn't know Warren Farrell and were there out of curiosity were harassed. Here's a link to debunk the protesters' claims that Warren supports rape. And that's what they do. They they lie. They lie and say, you do this, you support this, you're a misogynist because of this. And it's just like, it's lies. They're just lies. And they think that they're right. And it's, it's mental illness. I don't know. It's mental illness in addition to it really is just subversion. It's, it's hateful subversion. Trying to turn a peaceful march into a violent one. March against misogynists. If you ever find yourself believing that feminism is about equality, remember that they created an event in response to a march for men's rights at the same time and place. When they protested the March for Men, which was organized by a woman and had many female supporters, leading to several arrests when their group brought knives to a peaceful protest. If feminism fights for equality, why do so many feminists assume anyone talking about men's rights and issues is not a feminist? If men's rights activists are so bad, why don't they act like this at women's events? While feminists have a history of protesting men's rights. And what I talk about in, my, in one of my arguments is that if misogyny and patriarchy were, were hand in hand and if the patriarchy was real and if men who ran the, the world or, or, or the West specifically really are misogynists, then women wouldn't even have a voice in, in our society. They wouldn't have the right to assemble. They wouldn't have the right to march against things like this. They wouldn't have that the right. They'd be arrested. They'd be beaten. They'd be thrown in jail. If Western society really was patriarchal, there would be no feminism. There would be no feminists because the, 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 the misogynistic patriarchy would, would totally shut it down. And that's one of the points that I'm about to make in a second when I go back. Um, the March for Men took place on August 25th, 2018 in Mer Melbourne, Australia. In the weeks leading up to the, the event, the National Union of Students 
women's department began planning a counter protest as they called it for the same time and place according to them the march was made to promote racism sexism fascism rape violence against women and more that's what they do they they take men real issues that men go through and they twist it and they lie and they say, oh, you're this and you're that. And this is what they do. Maybe that's why so many men and women of, of different nationalities can be seen having a good time. He's being ironic there. He's basically saying, yeah, no, they're, they're not. That's not that's not what it is. That's not what the March for Men is at all. Uh, it's just something that feminism has lied because they don't want men to be empowered. That's why they fight against this stuff because feminism wants to uplift women over men. Feminism is a power grab. Plenty of March for Men attendees have posted videos of the event and it's plain to see that it was large it was a largely positive setting, basically meaning people of all races of all of, of both genders were coming together in peace to fight for men and the feminists didn't like that so they planned a counterattack and they lied and they said, "Oh, it's promoting rape and promoting this that and this is what they do." Uh, at least until counter protesters showed up to heckle, making blaring noises through loudspeakers and generally causing a disturbance. Thankfully, police kept most of them separate from the audience and speakers. Maybe you've heard about fights, arrests, and people and people bringing knives. What you probably didn't hear was that the knives were found during bag searches and no one used them. You probably didn't hear that the fights were so brief that almost no one in, in attendance of over 400 bothered to record them and that maybe just maybe the mob of screeching liars who protested the event for no reason were the ones being violent and the ones who had the weapons. <laughs> Not that the facts would stop the media from twisting everything to paint MRAs in a bad light. The film Feminists Don't Want You to See, the Red Pill documentary, fantastic. Watch that. She did a great job. The sentence best describes the red pill and the controversy surrounding it. That sentence, if you've never heard of the documentary, it's about a feminist filmmaker, Cassie J, who interviews men's rights activists and does her research on the movement. The result is that she walks away from feminism and delivers a fair, balanced look at MRAs. She did fantastic. She did a great job. And she, she, she told the truth, and it changed her. And she sought the truth, and it changed her. Changed her, changed her perspective. She's no longer a so-called feminist, at least in the, in, in the vein that she was before. Her eyes were open to the truth and the red pill but why why would anyone abandon their affiliation with this heroic noble group of angels who want nothing more than for men and women to get along and be equal maybe it was the fact that many australian cinema owners banned it due to backlash by backlash i mean protests and death threats or maybe it was all the student protests to keep the film off campus maybe it was the way the media butchered her interviews maybe it was all the smear campaigns from people who have clearly never seen the movie but get on TV and blogs claiming that it promotes violence against women. See, it's just lies. They just lies, lies, lies. Nah, Cassie must have been brainwashed or something. After all, men's rights activism is the real hate group, right? Feminist quotes. New Year's resolution. Cultivate female friendships. Band together to kill all men. This one says, kill all men. Because I am the most powerful person in the world and I literally destroy innocent men's lives. <laughs> oh boy. If men are obsolete, then women will soon be extinct, extinct unless we rush down that, om uh, that ominous brave new world path where women clone themselves by path patheno parthenogenesis as famously do komodo dragons hammerhead sharks and pit vipers basically she's saying you know if these people if these women want to kill all men then women will go extinct it's just basic biology but these these people are full of hate and they don't understand basic shit uh, a favorite weapon of anti-MRAs is to screenshot social media posts where men insult women or ridicule male issues and claim those guys speak for men's rights activists. Pay attention and you'll ra rarely find anything proving that these men are MRAs. Meanwhile, we're supposed to ignore the times where prominent feminists flat out stated that they hate men and encouraged misandry. 
Take Andrea Dworkin, for instance. This philosopher was given a commemorative conference at the University of Oxford. Catherine McKinnon, recipient of NOW's w Women of Vision Award, wrote a glowing article about Andrea, claiming that she deserved a Nobel Prize. Here's what she thinks of men and boys. Under patriarchy, every woman's son is her potential betrayer and also the inevitable rapist or exploiter of another woman. And this is why women today want to raise their kids without men. This is why women today are trying to, you know, hold more power over raising the child because they believe if they raise the child to love women and do what they want, etc., that the that the child will grow up to empower women and the, and usually these guys grow up to just be kind of, you know, effeminate men, kind of weak men, really brainwashed men and, and I run into one of those guys in this particular argument that I'm talking about today. Um, and you see these guys all the time, these white male, or I shouldn't say white, but these male feminists, and they're white or black, they come in all colors, uh, these male feminists who defend women at all costs without, you know, without any basis or facts. And, um, you know, this is, they're, they're the result of single mothers without a strong father because they believe strong male leadership is the patriarchy. They believe that e e even though their own, their own nature, their own female nature says that I need to seek out a strong man for reproductive service, uh, for re reproduction. I need to seek out a strong man to help me raise my kid, help me financially, et cetera, et cetera. Their own female nature betrays them. So they're, they're twisted and they're pulling, you know, they're like a cord pulled on each end that really doesn't ever go any which any one way because they're just they're so confused because they think men are evil they think the patriarchy is bad yet their own female nature wants to seek out a man a strong man to provide financial help with and to raise their kids it's just twisted only when manhood is dead and it will perish when ravaged femininity no longer sustains it only then will we know what it is to be free i mean this is just falsity they're implying that men are just horrible to women and it's sad it really is it's just it's just so damaging it's damaging to the relationship between men and women it's damaging to the children it's damaging to society and this is the, this is the lies this is the subversion so a subversive you know tactics that are really just you know sick it's sick it's just really trying to tear apart men and women, tear apart the relationship bond, tear apart the trust. And a lot of it is per perpetuated by women who really do hate men. A lot of it is perpetuated by women who really do want to tear down men and hold power over, you know, social, political, financial, or, you know, arenas. And they're actually perpetuating the brainwashing propaganda and lies that affect all women. Women who actually might not know better. That's the sad part. A lot of women read this and they believe that it's true. Oh, men are men are controlling and men are oppressive by nature. Uh, and, and, that, and that ruins them. And they go off to college and they're taught by these radical feminist professors. This These lies. Here's a quote from Robert Morgan who helped start the contemporary feminist movement. I feel that man-hating is an honorable and viable political act, that the oppressed have a right to class hatred against the class that is oppressing them. There you go. You create a boogeyman, you hate the boogeyman, that way you remove accountability and justification, and you, and you justify the attack of that boogeyman. It's the same thing that Hitler did with the Jews. You know, he created the boogeyman, and... He created hatred for the boogeyman. This justified the unification and the unified attacks against the supposed boogeyman. Sarah Miller Gerhardt, who created one of the first women's and gender studies programs in the U.S., said the ratio of men to women must be radically reduced so that men approximate only 10% of the total population. This is sick shit, man. Don't forget the author of The 2% Myth, which people still cite to undermine men who were falsely accused of rape. Susan Brown Miller used zero sources for that claim, and it's been debunked. Here's what she wrote in Chapter 1 of that 1975 book, quote, Against Our Will, unquote. Indeed, one of the earliest forms of male bonding must have been the gang rape of one woman by a man of, by a band of marauding men. <laughs> it just doesn't happen, man. 
Uh, from prehistoric times to the present, I believe rape has played a critical function. It is nothing more or less than a conscious process of intimidation by which all men keep all women in a state of fear. But please tell us more about how some random guy disrespected women on social media. Don't forget to label him an MRA just because. Bonus points if you target a man who has spoken against men's rights activists numerous times. Conclusion, yes. Yes, feminism is a hate group. Imagine if real feminists were as disgusted by feminazis as they are with people who think they're all bad. Don't tell me that feminists care about equality when they're the ones going out of their way to shut down every form of support for men. To those of you who love to say those aren't real feminists and not all feminists, the bottom line is that these people are calling themselves that while committing these acts these acts in the name of feminism. We don't want to hear your deflections. We don't want to hear celebrities guilt tripping people who aren't feminists, but never addressing the real reasons why anyone thinks feminism is bad. We want more of you quote unquote real feminists to either do something about your associates or shut up. By the way, that challenge to find MRAs doing anything like what this article is about is still on. Great article, man. Fantastic. I've read, I've read this whole article, so I don't have time to get into um, my uh, argument on you know over this article that I shared. Um, but I will have to leave that for a part two. So I do share this, um, and there is some arguments here. Uh, this guy blocked me. His name was Rakeem. I said, did you know since 1973 women have killed more than 17 million babies through Planned Parenthood? That's almost three times as many Jews that Hitler allegedly killed, and guess which one is a more talked about tragedy? Roughly 500,000 babies are put to death every year by women, and yet you sickos call them unwanted parasites, while simultaneously claiming men are the real killers for starting wars. So abortion is one of the things that I talk about greatly on social media, and that's one of the biggest arguments against uh, you know, keeping the child is that it's a parasite and that we don't need any more children in the world. So somehow that justifies murdering of a life who I guarantee if you gave it choice, whether it wanted to live or die, it guarantee it would want to live. And that's some of the sick shit that I hear any and every 